Hey you guys, I hope you are having an amazing day. My day is going pretty good. I talked to my dad on the phone all the way out in California. He's doing good. Let's see, anything else I did today? Not really. Um, today's been one of those just kind of chill days, which I don't get to have very often. I mean, I've still been doing all the typical things and running around like crazy, like around my house like crazy, but it's been a little bit more chill today, which is very, very nice. It's Friday, trying to relax a little bit. After I film this, I'm going to kind of probably take the rest of the afternoon off. Probably sometime this weekend, I will be doing my roots. I actually like having roots in my hair. I like them this length. If I were to let this grow out and just bleach the parts that grow out and not the whole root, it's really difficult to do that by yourself. So I tend to just bleach my roots as they grow out and then be really happy with my hair for like a couple weeks while they're this length. But as you can see, my hair is almost completely back to blonde. There's a little bit of pink here and here, and there's some spots that have held onto the pink, but this is almost all entirely blonde with just a slightly peachy tint to it. I really like it actually, but I know that once I bleach this, it's going to be slightly different, so I am going to have to go ahead and color the whole thing. I'm sticking with pink, um, pinky peachy. I'm not quite sure where on the spectrum of pinky peachy we're going to be. We'll see. <laughs> Um, anyway, today I wanted to do my November favorites before we are too far into December. It's the 4th. How are we this far into December, you guys? I have nothing done. Like, literally, trees are up, like I mentioned in my last video, but they're not decorated. Nothing has been purchased yet. Um, we're just doing our family for Christmas, of course, being very, very safe. I'm buying almost everything online. Just staying very, very safe as possible. There's still a lot of work, even when it's just your immediate family that lives in your house. There's still a lot of work that goes on around Christmas, and I desperately need to do my eyebrows so bad. I finally did my nails today for the first time in weeks. I tried doing them yesterday and using press-ons, but the press-ons I had were two years old and they flew off right away. So, um, yeah, I did gels today. Anyway, favorites. Um, let me start with the makeup favorites. First up is I haven't used these for a while and I haven't mentioned them for a while, so I want to remind you guys of these. These are the Wet n Wild Liquid Katsu Lipsticks. These are amazing, especially if you love liquid lipstick, but you tend to find them a little too drying or a little too expensive. These are perfect drugstore liquid lipsticks. These are probably the best drugstore liquid lips I have found. I only have three shades of this. I have Rebel Rose, Give Me Mocha, and Very Recognize, but they're just beautiful, beautiful colors. These also last a long time. I probably had these like at least two or three years and they're still good. They're still safe to use. I know someone out there is freaking out about bacteria, but I'm like really obsessively careful with keeping my lipsticks and things like that as clean as possible. And I still use those. So anyway, um, highly recommend those. The other favorite is Oh my goodness, this concealer. This is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I use the shade Vanilla. I love this concealer. This is beautiful. This works with coverage like Tarte Shape Tape, but it doesn't get cakey. It doesn't make my under eyes look dry. I do get a tiny bit of creasing in the one line I have like right here. That's the only creasing I get out of this. And I make a ton of facial expressions during the day. I am not one of those girls who has trained their face to just not like move or Botox it not to move, even though I will Botox these four headlines in a heartbeat, not gonna lie. I don't trust anyone around where I live to do Botox, flat out. But um, I love this concealer because it doesn't 
crease badly and when I get a little crease under my eye, I can just tap it out. It doesn't need set, it doesn't run, it doesn't look dry, it doesn't look cakey. Um, my skin's very dry during the winter and it doesn't cause any problems. It blends out beautifully. I used it with my fingertips, I've used it with Beauty Blender and I've used it with a puff. I love using this with a puff. It's my favorite because lately I've been doing all my foundation with a brush. So instead of having to wet be a blender just for my concealer, I've been using a puff and it works amazing. Speaking of brushes, my last haul video, I finally got the it Cosmetics Love is the Foundation brush and I have been using it and I love it. Today I'm using it with the NYX Spare With Me Tinted Skin Veil. But I've tried it with that and with the Anastasia foundation and it just does a beautiful job. There are no streaks, it blends evenly, it's not too heavy because a lot of the times you put on a foundation with a brush, it can look heavier. This blends everything out so, so nice. But anyway, I, this is what happens when you're down to one cup of coffee a day. Anyway, I love this brush and yes, I will have to wash it now that it fell on the floor. Okay, so next favorite, skincare. When we went down to Columbus for my birthday, I did stop into a Sephora and I got this. This is the Belief True Cream Moisturizing Balm. I have gotten so many samples of this and every time I get a sample, I'm like, I love this, I need to buy a full size. And then I never did. And when I was in Sephora, I was like, I wanna get myself something that I know I need, I know I'll use, I don't wanna just buy another palette that will probably get added in my collection and only used once every couple of weeks. So I started looking in skincare and oh my gosh, they carry so so much Korean skincare and Sephora now it makes me so happy because the quality of the products is so freaking good. So I saw this and I got, I got the medium sized one. I didn't get the giant one just because I do have another moisturizer I'm working with and this says it's good for 12 months. I will definitely use it before then. But I didn't, because this is a pop moisturizer, I don't like buying these like huge, just in case I have a breakout and bacteria gets into it, any issues like that. I like buying smaller sizes. Plus, I think the products stay fresher if you buy smaller sizes. So I love this. This is what I've been using during the day under my makeup. It's what I'm wearing under my makeup now. You can see how glowy my skin looks. Literally, all that is on my skin is this moisturizer and this skin veil. That's it. And my skin looks so good. I mean, you can see like acne scarring through um, through the foundation and everything, but as far as just the texture, it looks really, really good and really nice in person too, which I love. All right, last thing for like makeup favorites, it's not really makeup though. It's a hair clip. Um, These are, I think they're, Alligator clips? I'm not sure if they're called alligator clips. I'm not sure, but this is the kind where it has this little extra piece here. This little extra piece is freaking amazing. I got these at Sally's, but I know Arctic Fox sells these now. I know a bunch of places sell them, but I think I've mentioned these before, but these are amazing because they grip around your hair like beautifully. I use these when I cut hair. I use these when I dye hair. I use these when I'm really freaking annoyed with my hair falling in my face and I just want to pull back a little bit and do that. Like obviously not the cutest look, like not the most stylish, but these are so useful. I only have four of these and I need to get more because I use these all the time for like everything. They're incredible. Like I've used these to hold a curtain back. Like these are fantastic multi-use things to have around the house. Okay, now under non-makeup stuff. First up, is this not the cutest wear cup you've ever seen? I've not bought a Starbucks branded cup since I was like in high school because my friend got me a Starbucks mug for my birthday when I was in high school and the thing did not keep coffee hot. Like, 
It was supposed to keep coffee hot for like six hours. I pour boiling hot coffee into it. It would be lukewarm like an hour later. I'm like, no, I can't trust you in my life. But um, for, you know, the past year or two, I've seen these huge water cups there. I'm like, oh, that one's really cute. Oh, that one's really cute. Oh, I might want that one. I just kept avoiding buying them. And then I realized that I was getting horribly dehydrated. Now, I do have other straw cups like this around the house, but they're really, really small. Like, they are they hold maybe 16 ounces. So I've been watching and waiting for the right one to come along because these are 24 ounce cups and they're double walled so you can put ice in them and they won't like, you know, leave condensation everywhere because I love super icy water. And then I saw this one sitting at the Starbucks in my Target and I was like, oh, she's so pretty. So I, I brought her home, washed her over and over and over and over again because open cups sitting out freak me out. But anyway, she's beautiful, she is sparkly. Like you can't even tell like the light through here. Like I wonder if I can, okay, I'm about to go really geeky on you guys. I'm using my cell phone light to see if this will work. There. You can see like blue through it, like blue and purple and all kinds of colors. Like it's so freaking pretty. You guys know I'm a sucker for pretty packaging and this screams pretty packaging. And I will only consistently drink water if it's in a straw cup. I don't know if my brain is too like lazy to unscrew like a screw top water bottle. Like even like the reusable ones cause I have them and I don't use them. But a straw bottle, like I will drink that whole thing down. I don't know why, but this works. It's pretty, it's like the size of my head and it's gorgeous. Like I want like my walls covered in something that looks like that. Anyway, the other favorite thing I have is I finally got an Apple Watch. Yep, finally. I know, everyone's had them, everyone's had them forever. Um, you know, I'm a huge Apple fan girl. I avoided buying one because I didn't think I would use it that much because I've never been a big watch person. Like, I have my phone to check the time. Why do I need a watch? Fast forward to 2020 and um, I'm homeschooling four kids. So um, I have to keep the kids on a very strict schedule with being able to be in their classes and on time. So... I have to also keep track of their tents, like minute by minute. I was constantly having to go find my phone, chase down my phone, turn off alarms, mark things down. And I'm like, this isn't helpful. Also, um, I was having trouble with gaining a little bit of weight. We're working on that now. But um, I got into a very bad stress eating habit. I'm sure all of us did. Like, if you have not stress eaten through this thing, like, I don't know what kind of human you are. But um, this also helps keep track of how much I'm walking in a day, how many calories I'm burning roughly. I know it's not super accurate. But um, I'm not, like, calorie counting or anything. I've tried that. It doesn't work well for me. But... Um, it reminds me to stand up. It reminds me, you know, to breathe. I love the breathe feature on here because I do have like panic attacks and occasionally I will just like go for a minute without breathing in. I know that's weird, but it happens. So this kind of is like keeping me sane a little bit. And um, also I love that on this watch face, I can have the time it is here and the time in Seoul because I watch so much BTS stuff and like watch like all the award shows in Korea and stuff like that. So it's really helpful to know what time it is in Seoul. And right now it's 4.50 a.m. in Seoul, see? And also um, the photo watch faces are like my favorite thing ever. Like ever, ever. Like this mem <laughs> Okay, well it went from a mem of a hamster stuffing its face to uh, Jimin, which is a much prettier thing to have on your wrist. My husband's like, you have like 12 photos on there and only one of them is of me. And I was like, one's of a hamster. <laughs> but anyway, I love this thing. Um, I got the Series 6 40 millimeter because I have really small wrists. Like, 
it's nearly the width of my wrist and the um, pink sand sports band, which I didn't think I would like. I actually really, really like it. I also use this for listening to Spotify, for listening to um, podcasts, and also I have all my grocery lists on my phone when I was having to go to the store because some things I just don't like having delivered like meat and vegetables. I'm sorry, I don't care what a grocery store says they're not going to be as picky about my meat and vegetables as I am. So um, I was able to actually, the app I use is any list. I paid for premium for it. It's like $10 for an entire year. So I can have the app on my phone so that I can make my grocery list or so that I can have my the app on my watch. I can make my grocery list and then while I'm in the store, I can just check it off on my watch. So all I need to do is disinfect my watch and I don't have to be touching my phone when I'm in the store. It makes me feel much, much safer, much more comfortable. I'm not like digging my phone out of my purse or out of pocket or something. I literally have everything I need right here. I did get the Wi-Fi only version just because I'm almost always in my house. And if I'm at my house, my phone is with me. It's not like I'm going on long walks outside without my phone. It's not like I'm going exercising outside of the house, anything like that. If I was planning on doing anything like that within the next like year, I probably would have gotten it with cellular, but I didn't see the point in spending the extra money when it's not something, it's not a feature I'm going to see myself using. Oh, uh, I bet my tug and now my nose is stuffing up in response. Uh, I have winter allergies, you guys. I'm fine. Um, it's just being in the house all day, no matter how much I clean, I don't have the windows open because it's too cold. And then I bit my tongue and my nose stuffed up like weirdest thing ever. Anyway, I think that's it for all the physical I can show you favorites. So let's move on to shows, books, and um, music. Actually, the music one I can show you. You know it's coming, right? You knew it was going to be this, right? Like, of course. What else would, was I going to say was my music favorite this month? Um, B came out, um, by BTS, of course, if you haven't been around this channel, I am only slightly obsessed with BTS, but I love this album. I think it's beautiful. Honestly, it's probably one of my favorite concepts they've done. Like, I love it. I love that so much of it was geared towards their personalities and what they wanted to do. I love that they took a lot of the photos themselves. Um, I love that a lot of the things have their handwriting on it. Like it feels very personal to me. I was surprised that there weren't more songs on the album. Like I thought there would be more and I've seen that there were several they didn't include and I was like, I want those songs. I know they're good. I want those songs. But anyway, I bought, I pre-ordered the deluxe version and it actually got to my house like a week after the album was released, which is why I usually don't pre-order. My typical routine is I will actually go to Target on the morning of release when Target opens and literally stand there and wait for them to put the album on the shelves. Um, they know me very well at Target because I will just sit there patiently and wait. But um, I love this album. I love the way it's done. I love the size. Like the whole thing is gorgeous. Like I can't think. The only thing I would change is like the postcards they did of like the artwork or the photos they took themselves. I wish that those had been like smaller and the photo cards were bigger because oh my gosh, the photo cards are so cute of them lying on the couches. Like it's adorable. Like I need that in a poster on my wall. Like I need Yungi in that blue velvet outfit like plastered across my wall. Like can I get a wall size mural of that? I would, I would be such a happy girl. But anyway, I love this album. Um, before you guys ask my favorite song on this, it was very hard to decide probably fly to my room. It's beautiful. Jim's voice in it is just 
absolutely stunning. Um, but I love every song on this. They're all so, so, so good. Like, just, it makes me so happy. I'm like, when are you guys releasing the next album? Because I want another one. But yeah, BTS has basically been keeping me sane throughout this whole thing. But yeah, I love that. If you haven't listened to it yet, please, please, please go listen to it. It's really good. I think you'll like it. Anyway. Let's move on before I completely, you know, fangirl all over this video. But um, my favorite show was definitely The Crown season four. I've loved The Crown since it came out. When I was growing up, my mom absolutely was just fascinated with the Brit British monarchy and, and in particular, Princess Diana. Um, I still remember the night that she died, like in detail, hearing like my mom flipping out about it. And like, I think I was asleep when she found out or something, because I just remember waking up and hearing like screaming in the house. And it was just so bad. But anyway, season four was really, really, really well done. It was beautiful. I think, I think they left some stuff out that should have been covered. And I think they showed some stuff that wasn't fully explained in detail. Like, I think it could have been, I think it could, I would have done it slightly differently, but I'm that way about any historical drama, because this is historical fiction. It's not entirely accurate as to what went on. It's pretty close but not entirely accurate. But with any historical drama, I'm like, I would have done this a little bit differently, but that's just me and that's because I love historical dramas. But anyway, really, really good. Very, very interesting watching. Books, okay, so I have been reading a ton of books lately. Uh, my sleep has been still all over the place. I'm working on it, but I have not been sleeping good, so when I can't sleep, I read books. And when um, when I'm cleaning around the house, when I'm like egg thumbnails, when I'm just doing stuff that doesn't require a ton of active brain power, when it's just like something physical, where I can focus on a story, typically why I'm cleaning, because I do have to clean a ton, just because we have a lot of people in the house. Um, I listen to audiobooks, so I've been listening to audiobooks. Um, I get all my books and all my audiobooks on Libby, it's the library app. If you live in the US, um, there's a good chance that your local library is connected to the Libby app and you can um, put in your library card and have access to like hundreds of thousands of books to um, read or listen to. So it's amazing. It's probably one of the most used apps on my phone. So the main thing that I've been listening to in November was I went on a Lisa C binge. Lisa C is an amazing author. She writes about historical China, basically from like, she goes back into, like, I think the earliest she's gone back is like the 20s, maybe, maybe into the 1800s, I'm not sure. But um, she does books from like, I believe from like the 1800s through like the 90s, the present day. And they're just so, so, so good. Um, I've read, I think now I've read every book she's written except the series, like the mystery series. I'm not that big into mysteries. Um, I've read nearly every book she's written. They're so good. The ones that I read this month were Shanghai Girls, Dreams of Joy, and The Tea Girl of Hummingbird Lane. And I highly recommend those if you're into um, historical fiction and you're not squeamish. They're very raw about certain things but they're really, really, really good. So if you love historical fiction, you will definitely like these a lot. Um, they're really good. Um, Shanghai Girls is based 
in China and Los Angeles. Dreams of Joy is the sequel, and it's based in China and Los Angeles. And then Tea Girl of Hummingbird Lane, again, is China and Los Angeles. But they're all very different stories, and they're all really, really, really good. Tea Girl of Hummingbird Lane is separate from Shanghai Girls and Dreams of Joy. Those two are a series. But um, Tea Girl's separate. But they're really, really good books. So I highly recommend those. And I also finally decided to start reading John Green books. You guys... Yes, I've made it this far without reading The Fault in Our Stars, and I read it. Well, that was a mistake. Guess who was crying into her pillow at like 2 a.m.? Not, not, oh my god. Like of all the ways for that, that was not how I expected that story to end. Yeah. Um, I may need to watch the movie now because I haven't seen the movie either. Typically, if there is a book that gets a ton of hype and then a movie comes out from it, I will not watch the movie until I've read the book first. I'm like that kind of person, like I want to read the book first. So now I will probably go and watch the movie, but I really like the book. I think it was beautifully written. It was very sad, but... It was also just one of those books that you're like, oh, it's so good. But anyway, that is everything. Um, if you guys have any book recommendations for me, please, I would love to know your book recommendations. Like, I read like crazy. It's probably one of my favorite things to do, but I read at night because it's the only time my house is quiet. So like, everyone goes to sleep and I'm like, okay, now I get to read, which is sometimes why I can't sleep until 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning because if I find a really good book, I may be up all night reading it. Now on average, you guys, it typically takes me on average between 2 and 4 to 6 hours of solid reading to get through a book. I know that's fast. Uh, I think I timed it once and averaged about 30 seconds per page. I am a very, very, very fast reader. That's why I can go through so many books. I've probably read like 10 books in November. Now that includes audiobooks, but I typically only go through one or two audiobooks. So it's probably like at least eight books re read in November. And I just, I love reading. So if you have any suggestions of books you think I might like, my very favorite genre is historical fiction, but I'll pretty much read anything. The only thing I don't read is I don't like like horror or m mysteries or like, you know, stuff like that, like mystery type stuff I'm not big on. Um, I've read them before and there's a couple I've liked, but um, typically I like historical fiction. I like contemporary fiction. I like self-help books, I like business books, I like um, novels in general, so anything you want to recommend, I would love to hear it, or any shows you think I should watch. Me and my husband just started a new Korean drama. We only started it a couple of days ago, though, so I love it already, though, but that will probably be in my December favorites. But anyway... I have been filming for over half an hour, so I'm going to let you guys go before this turns into a monster of a video. I love you guys so, so much. Thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you liked it, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to my channel. You can also keep up with me um, on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I'm mostly on Twitter and Instagram, and all the links for those are down below. Below. Thank you guys again so, so much for watching, and I will see you again very, very soon. Bye.